Meet Schmidt and Django, a nerd and super cool jock in high school. These two rivals ran into each other at a police academy. Well, I think rivals, it's a little bit of a stretch. But we all know that nerds and popular guys do not get along well with each other, right? But not these two. They became friends and supported each other until they finally graduate. And once they did, they ended up their career in police department. <laughs> they really thought this job would have more car chases and explosions, but oh boy. Little did they know we thought exactly the same. And what did we get two police officers on a bike what but don't worry because this is where the funny story goes on they are extremely excited when they see a motorcycle gang called the one percenters smoking weed uh -oh. schmidt and jenko shake them down and while the gang members mock and laugh schmidt finds a bag of coke in one of their cell bags the gang members take off and schmidt and jenko each pursue one guy schmidt is afraid to shoot his gun so he gets bowled over and his perp escapes, but Jenko catches his man. Schmidt and Jenko celebrate like crazy, but things don't always go as planned. Otherwise, this would have been a short film and not the romantic comedy of the year, am I right? Now, do you remember the legal rights that a person being arrested by the police must be told about? Come on, I know you know it. And Hollywood made sure we all remember it. Well, you see, without the Miranda rights, you got nothing. If a cop arrests you and doesn't recite the Miranda rights, they can charge you. Oh, goodness. They only had one job. I think we could have done it better. You had one job. So the captain sends them off to an undercover program. The department is resurrecting. Schmidt and Jenko pull off the 21 Jump Street, an old abandoned Korean church. They are met by Captain Dixon, who explains that Schmidt and Jenko and the other recruits will be going undercover in various high schools. No one at the schools knows about the police program, so it's very important that they don't get expelled. Captain Dixon pulls Schmidt and Jenko aside to talk about their specific assignment. They will be going undercover in Sagan High School because a new designer drug has recently taken hold among the student populace. Dixon shows them a YouTube video of one of the students taking the drug. The kid proceeds though the stages of giggling, tripping out, extreme overconfidence, then total craziness. Apparently the kid had ODD'd and died, so it's important that Schmidt and Jenko infiltrate the dealers and find the supplier fast. It often strikes me that the actors in high school movies look too old, but Schmidt and Jenko look really too old. How old are you? Like and the movie isn't shy about pointing that out. The good thing about this flick though is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. Back to the story. Schmidt and Jenko have to pose as brothers and stay at Schmidt's parents' house. As they move into Schmidt's old room, Schmidt tells Jenko that he's afraid they won't be friends anymore when they go back to high school, since they were never friends in high school before. Jenko tells him not to be silly, it's just an assignment. Besides, Jenko is sure he can show Schmidt how to be cool, but for him, this was only a second chance to be a failure again because one's a loser, always a loser. Loser! You're a loser! Such a bad idea, right? Playing pretend to be a teenager, having to chit-chat with others and fool around the whole time. Aren't they casting someone else? Just saying. On the first day of school, Jenko tells Schmidt to use only one strap of his backpack and they get a sweet muscle car from the police impound lot. But when they arrive at Sagan, all the kids use two straps and there are a bunch of cliches that Jenko doesn't recognize, like the emo kids. Schmidt is distracted when he sees a really pretty girl riding her bicycle and Jenko gets in a fight with the eco-friendly kids who aren't impressed with his gas guzzling car. Jenko punches one echo kid in the mouth and it turns out the kid is gay. So everybody thinks Jenko committed a hate crime. Hey man, that's not cool. Schmidt and Jenko are pulled into the principal's office and put on warning. In the process, they mix up their fake identities so now everyone thinks that Schmidt is the super athlete and Jenko is in all the advantages advanced chemistry classes. Schmidt heads off to drama class, where he sees the pretty girl again. Her name is Molly and her friend Eric is the head of the Echo Kids. Schmidt starts chatting up Molly and asks her where he can score the new designer drug. Molly shows him off some graffiti with a dealer's phone number. Schmidt attacks the dealer, who tells Schmidt to meet him at the yearbook office. Schmidt grabs Jenko out of chemistry and they head to the yearbook office. Once there, they discover that the dealer is none other than Molly's friend Eric. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. 
Eric sells them each one hit of the drug, but he forces them to take the drugs right away in front of him. And just in case you did not notice, the drug has a peculiar shape. I'm not gonna mention it, because I want you to go and watch it yourself. Schmidt and Jenko run to the bathroom afterwards and try to vomit, but they can't. I don't like where this is going. As they head back to class, the gym teacher stops them. He wants Schmidt to join the track team. Remember, he thinks Jim is a super athlete because of the mixed identities. In the middle of talking to the gym teacher, Schmidt and Jenko start tripping out on the drug. To get away, Schmidt agrees to run track. Back in the drama, Schmidt has reached the stage of extreme overconfidence. The drama teacher asks Schmidt to audition for the role of Peter Pan, and Schmidt kills it. He will be playing Peter, opposite Molly's Wendy. But when Schmidt tries to run in the track meet after school, he has moved on to the crazy face of the drug and he totally messes up the meet, flinging his relay baton across the finish line. The Echo kids are watching from the stands and they think Schmidt is hilarious. Back at the 21 Jump Street, Schmidt and Jenko are able to draw a chart for Captain Dixon with all the Echo kid dealers. But they don't know who the supplier is yet. The other undercover cops have already made a bunch of busts in their high schools, so Dixon tells Schmidt and Jenko to hurry it up. Jenko is pissed that he's not cool anymore. Apparently, the cool thing now is to be smart and tolerant, so Schmidt is far more popular. Or should I say, Brad? Well, maybe going back and forth is getting tricky, right? Okay, let's focus. Schmidt thinks they should throw a party to earn Eric's trust. Such a brilliant idea. Not sure how they're gonna pull this off, but still, nice thinking. Good job. He calls Molly and they laugh and joke on the phone. She agrees to invite everybody to the party. Schmidt and Jenko give Schmidt's parents a trip, so they go out of town. Then they buy a ton of alcohol and steal a bunch of drugs from the evidence locker. Jenko invites the chemistry nerds to the party as well, because he has plans to bug Eric's phone. Everybody shows up to the party and Jenko successfully grabs Eric's phone. But before he can return it, Eric starts leaving because a bunch of thugs from another high school have arrived. To stall him, Schmidt gets in a fight with the thugs. Jenko helps out and Schmidt actually wins the fight, only to realize he's been stabbed in the shoulder. Jenko pulls out the knife and everybody keeps parting. Meanwhile, Schmidt's parents realize they forgot their cell phone. Ah, yeah, everything was too good to be true. So they come home and bust up the party. Everybody runs away, but Jenko has successfully bugged Eric's phone and Eric brings Schmidt on board as the dealer. Schmidt brings all the drugs to Captain Dixon and carries cash back to Eric, so he thinks Schmidt is doing a good job. Eric still hasn't introduced Schmidt to his supplier, however. Meanwhile, Schmidt keeps flirting with Molly and Jenko spends his time blowing stuff up with the chemistry nerds. While Schmidt is hanging out with the Echo Kids and Jenko is chilling with the nerds, Jenko uses the mic on the cell phone to eavesdropping on Eric. Schmidt and Molly walk into the room where Eric's phone is charging and Jenko is surprised to hear Schmidt asking Molly to prom, but he's even more surprised when Molly accepts. What? But then Eric and the rest of the Echo Kids come inside and start ragging on Jenko, because he likes being cool. Schmidt joins in, calling Jenko retarded. Back at 21 Jump Street, the other undercover cops tell Schmidt and Jenko that the designer drug is spreading to their schools. Jenko hears via his wiretap that Eric is setting up some kind of big exchange. Back at school, Schmidt is about to go on stage for his starring role as Peter Pan. Jenko says they have to intercept the exchange. They see Eric driving off, but their muscle car has been booted for parking in the handicapped space. They steal the driver's ed car instead and follow Eric. Eric meets up with the gang and hands them a piñata full of drugs. Schmidt and Jenko follow the one percenters, but they are pissed at each other and Jenko keep using the teacher break in the driver's ed car to screw with Schmidt. They end up slamming into one of the bikers and now instead of following the bikers, they are being chased. Well, well, well. How the turntables... A huge car chase ensues where Jenko and the one percenters shoot at each other and finally Schmidt chokes again, failing to shot one of the bikers. Schmidt and Jenko start screaming at each other. Jenko says that Schmidt is in too deep, he is actually filling out college applications, like he gets to live his life over again, to what Schmidt replies. Who said no my Miranda rights, you idiot? Well, he's not wrong. Schmidt runs back to the high school, but the play has already started. When he pushes his way on stage, Molly is embarrassed and says she never wants to see him again. Even worse, Jenko jumps on Schmidt and they get into a big fist fight. Remember, the one thing this pair had to avoid while undercover? 
Yeah, that's right. Their childish behavior led the principal to expel them. You had one job. It was all about being average teenagers at school. Was it necessary to take it too seriously? Back at the church, Schmidt says, aren't you going to yell at us? Captain Dixon says, nope, I'm just going to fire you. Yes, expelled and fired. Lord, have mercy. Schmidt keeps trying to call Molly, but she won't answer. Jenko packs his stuff to move out of Schmidt's house, but not before he goes all sentimental on him and tells him, You know what's, you know what's crazy to me? I think that I actually thought that we were brothers. I would have taken a bullet for you. Just then, Eric rolls up in his car asking both of them to get in. He takes Schmidt and Jenko to a deserted alleyway and pulls out two guns. Then he starts listing all the suspicious things Schmidt and Jenko had done. But just as they thought Eric was going to shoot them, he explained that after their on-stage fistfight, he knew for sure they weren't cops. Eric then gives Schmidt and Django the guns and asks them to help with a big meeting between Eric's dealer and the buyers. The big meeting is going down at prom. Schmidt and Django help each other get dressed and Schmidt asks Django if he'll be his date. They roll up to prom the way Jenko always imagined, in a white limo with doves flying out. They also bring the nerds and a bunch of hookers for dates. Well, I think I should skip a few parts. I do not want to give everything away. I'm just gonna say that the buyers reveal that they are undercover DEA agents. They've been infiltrating in the gang for five years and now Schmidt and Jenko have screwed everything up. A huge firefight breaks out and both DEA agents get shot in the neck. The gym teacher grabs Molly and the bag full of cash and takes off, but Schmidt and Jenko follows them. A chase scene ensues where all three groups beat around the city in limos shooting each other. Schmidt and Jenko are running out of ammo, but Jenko remembers his chemistry lessons and mixes potassium nitrate from the shotgun shells with lithium batteries, throws it all together in an alcohol bottle and chucks it into the gangster's limo, which ends up exploding and in turn causes the gym teacher's limo to crash as well. As they chase after the gym teacher on foot, he shoots directly at Schmidt, but in an heroic act, Jenko jumps in front of the bullets, taking two in the chest and one in the arm. Fortunately he's wearing a bulletproof vest, so he's not too badly hurt. Oh, thank God. But that leaves Schmidt to apprehend the gym teacher. This time though, he doesn't choke and shoots him right in the I know, as painful as it sounds, I'm not gonna mention it, but I'm afraid you already have the image in your head, don't you? Schmidt and Django apologize to each other and then Schmidt apologizes to Molly. Schmidt and Molly kiss and both Schmidt and Django finally recite the Miranda rights. Finally! Better late than never, I guess. And that's all for today. Make sure to stay tuned as we'll be doing 22 Jump Street very soon. For now, let us know in the comments what did you think of this movie. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video with your friends. See you next time!